In 2008, the FBI knocked on Switzerland's door and asked for legal help. That means a request by the US authorities for the Swiss judiciary to investigate the theft of billions of US dollars by Swiss organized crime. And the Swiss replied, as any criminal would do, I don't know what you're talking about. Over the years, they got bolder with pressure building up, arrogantly saying, do you know who we are? We are Switzerland you're dealing with, and we do what we want, because we are a sovereign state. Thus boldly lying as always and pretending to be innocent, neutral and clean. Though neutral countries would steal from other countries, because that would break their neutrality status as an act of aggression transgressing the borders. In the meantime, they mobilized the Swiss government and the Swiss authorities to give total backup towards big-time organized Swiss crime, showing the world that not only the Swiss banks were in it, but an entire nation. Even their left-wing parties defended the Swiss banking secrecy, which is in fact more right-wing thing to do, thus showing there are no real left-wingers in Switzerland, that it's all part of the show. Then after six years of hard work by the IRS, FBI and US Justice Department, on May 19, 2014, they gave up and admitted guilty of organized crime and billion dollar theft and that they, they've been lying all the time. After six years of lying, Switzerland pleaded guilty of crime, as any criminal knows when it's no more use to lie, as the evidence is so abundant. And it's not, it's not only these past six years Switzerland and the Swiss have been lying, but their entire history is based upon lies, crime, theft and assassinations. During these six years they've tried with an incredible team of super sly Swiss diplomats to stall time and have grass grown over it so everyone would forget about it. But unlike under Swiss sleeper agent President and General Eisenhower, this time the US didn't let go and force Switzerland to stop lying and admit guilt. And I know too what a bunch of evil liars the Swissies are, which now could be witnessed by the whole world. Six long years Swissies have been saying, no we didn't steal, Switzerland is honest, we honest Swiss don't steal. But in the end and after all the lies, Switzerland finally admitted to be a bunch of thieves and big-time liars. Just as they lied about the Nazi gold, the financing of Hitler, the Red Cross Nazi red line, and today's terror, torture and assassinations of immigrants. Now, the Swiss want vengeance as they are very vindictive in their hearts but they don't have the Germans to do it for them anymore. So they went to Iran last Easter and said, hey, let's work something out. We don't like the great American Satan either, because they destroyed our banks and made us look like thieves and liars in the eyes of the world. And if you would have talked to just any Swiss the past six years, you could have felt how they hate the US and the Americans because of the Swiss banks and the IRS. And I even found several appeals for violence against US citizens published in several Swiss newspapers because of the US and the Swiss banks. And I've published some of it on YouTube. Switzerland is a menace to the world and let's hope the US won't stop with this victory but will smoke the Swiss Nazi out of their rat holes. Switzerland a bunch of criminals with the country. Yeah, in this article from 2000, February 2009 from the BBC, the Swiss windbags, they still have a, a very big mouth, you know, and they trying just as Mr. Hitler said, well, there was their, was their pal, Mr. Hitler, the, Sw the Swiss agent, Mr. Hitler, uh, who said, well, the bigger the lie, the easier the people, you know, accepted and digested so similarly they, they still have a big mouth here in 2009 I'll show that here 
the Swiss windbags under pressure. Here it says, this is, oh, this is a clear case of power triumphing over the law, said Gabby Huber. Oh, Huber, don't we know that name? Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover, uh, Herbert Hoover. Well, they did no, the, 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 the Black, Tu Black Thursday, Black Tuesday in 1929. Well, here's another Huber. Member of Parliament. Switzerland's banking secrecy has been put under real pressure, they say, you know, and, uh, Yeah, Hans, Hans, uh, Hans Geiger, a professor, he, so, he was so astonished, the unbelievable weakness of the government, and Tony Brunner, you know, Brunner, like the Brunner they had, we had in the concentration camp, a commandant, and he's the president of the right-wing Swiss People's Party, he said, we are a sovereign state, and other countries should not be able to tell us what to do, he said. It's time to enshrine banking secrets in our constitution. And now, six years later, they admitted they stole the money, just like a thief. Here, they, these criminals, they're still trying, trying to pull it off here, six years ago. Big mouth, windbags, you know, and they lied. They just lied all the time. Well, there's a lot more in it here. They have been lying and lying and lying with with a very s sly team of diplomats, as this one here. But it has come out now that they lied. They've been lying all the time, no matter what they said. And here in Wikipedia, it shows when it started, 2008. And uh, well, I, I put the article in the link so you can read it for yourself if you want. Yeah, Switzerland, the organized criminals with the country. I'll put it in the link too. So here too, 2009. I've been following this for uh, six years. And I was hoping the Americans would, uh, uh, would, would do it, you know. Here again, the right wing. The right wing Swiss People's Party. Tony Brunner, he said, We are a sovereign state and other countries should not be able to tell us what to do. It's, you know, so here they're still trying to pull it through, you know, with, with sheer bluff. They're just bluffing, you know, and, and lying, stalling time. We are so clean and neutral. Well, in the end, they, they admitted they stole everything. So they've been lying for six years. They've been lying for all, through all their history. In, in about the Second World War, they've always been lying. Here are the proofs of that they have been lying all the time these six years. The proofs are here. The world has seen it, what a bunch of liars they are. Last Sunday, May 18th, 2014, the Swissies had a referendum and voted against the purchase of 22 Saab Gripen, fourth generation fighter jets from Sweden for an amount of 3.1 billion Swiss francs for the Swiss Luftwaffe. Yes, the name of the Swiss Air Force is still the same as the Nazis had in World War II. But why this gun-loving alpine base of racism and financial crime said no to the Jets? Well, I will tell you exactly why. It was their plan to have the US taxpayer pay for it through huge billion or trillion dollar tax fraud by the Swiss Nazi banks. Just look at the fine the Swiss Credit Suisse bank with that former swastika logo had to pay simultaneously. 2.6 billion US dollars, which is almost the same amount as those 22 Swedish fighter jets cost. As the US dollar has almost the same exchange rate as the Swiss franc has. I put the whole article in the links then, eh? So, same amount and the exact same time. Sunday the jet voting and next Monday the official confession of guilt of organized financial crime on US soil after the official indictments by the, by the IRS. 
And this $2.6 billion fine was already known in Switzerland before the referendum took place on Sunday. They knew it all and were aware of the inevitable giving back the stolen money. So what was planned to be a free renewal of the Swiss Luftwaffe out of the pockets of the US taxpayers has to be paid back now. So I put it all in the links below the uh, the video so you can read it quietly after. And you can see the enormous proofs of this um, huge crime by the Swissies. But why nobody goes to jail then? Because if you or I would st even steal $10, you'd go to jail. Well, because small thieves get hanged while the big ones get a medal. And this is not the first time the Swissies pull this off, as they did the very same thing in 1929 on Black Tuesday with the Swiss Bank of International Settlements together with the Federal Reserve, which was Hitler's Nazi bank of Yalma Schacht, thus financing the Nazi war industry, this time not with US tax money, but directly stealing all the savings of honest U.S. citizens, see my video, uh, Switzerland's Nazi Templar Banks, for more. It is not without reason that my video, Octagon Rules Over Pentagon, has been forbidden in both the U.S. and Switzerland. So someone from another country, please copy and re-upload. And back then in 1929, there was no NSA and IRS yet. And if there weren't today, the US taxpayer would have offered their 22 fighter jet present for the Swift Swiss Luftwaffe today, as financial crime is the most invisible of all. And this is what the guy of the Luftwaffe back then had to say. And here are some comparisons between 4th and 5th generation fighter jets. So here you can see the differences. First generations, they only have guns. The second generations, they got missiles. The third generation, they have radar guided missiles and uh, very maneuverable. Here's the first generation. This was the uh, the Saab Gripen or Gripen. I don't know how to pronounce that. Um, and this is the fifth generation. As the Americans, the Chinese, the Russians, even the Japs, they have it. Stealth abilities, well, I told you before. So this was the uh, the U.S. gift, supposed to be the U.S. gift. That was the plan for the Swissies. Why well, don't work, eh? Thanks to the IRS and the NSA. Well, I don't like governments, but uh, I have to admit this. A fourth generation fighter jet like the uh, the Saab um, uh, Gripen stands no chance at all against a fifth generation jet because of the advanced satellite guided missiles and the computer techniques, the possibility to fly at supersonic max speed for a long time at cruise speed and the stealth technology making it look like a bird on radar. A very fast bird though. On May 21st 2014, only a few days after the Swiss pleaded guilty uh, in front of a, um, a US court for uh, theft, lies and um, conspiracy, the Swiss Supreme Court decided that the Nazi salute is allowed again in Switzerland due to the high demand and its local popularity in the Alps. They don't know what they want. One year it's forbidden, the next year it's allowed, one year the arm is down, the next year it's up. Altogether leading to that famous movement by this annual fluctuation, up, down, up, down, Zeke, Heil, Zeke, Heil, up, down. Just like in the good old days in Nuremberg by the Swiss fifth column and thus the Swiss Justice Department equally adding up to that famous Nazi rhythm, up, down, up, down, Zeke, Heil, allowed, not allowed. But the Swissies know very well what they want. But they don't want the whole world to see it. Because it could be bad for big business. But as they voted against the EU again this year, 
and they plead guilty of theft, lies and conspiracy in front of a US court concerning the Swiss banks, big Swissy business is already on the decline. So you can read the whole article. Oh. Just punch pause. That was in, uh, in the mail online. put in the links for you and uh, that says mail online so they made the Nazi salute official now turning Switzerland into a paradise for goose tappers probably attracting all international goose tappers as well with a free Swiss bank account with 88 Swiss francs on it the only good thing is, they're easier to count, so nobody has to ask all Nazis, please raise their hands, because they all do it by themselves without asking them politely. Sick hail, and sick it is indeed. I've been telling you all the time that the Swiss have a Nazi justice department, and here we can see it happening in front of our eyes. Swiss Supreme Court in favour of the Nazi salute and Hitler's ideology. Well, what's next, hey? The uh, Swiss favorite place to practice the Nazi salute is on the holy grounds of the Rütli in the Swiss Alps, the very place Switzerland was founded by the Templars and those three men on August the 1st, 1291. Only two and a half months after the Crusades when they came back to found their utopia in the Swiss Alps. Now showing the relation between the Templars and the Nazis of which I've been talking to you about all the time. A Nazi salute on the, the holy ground of the Templars. The Nazi Templars of Octogon, Switzerland. And here it's me, an uninvited immigrant sleeping rough on the holiest ground of Switzerland, where the Templars heritage performed the Nazi salute, and me, the immigrant, snoring in the middle of that August 1st, 1291 Nazi Templar, rudely. So this was long before I had my, uh, my video cam, and before I discovered YouTube. Well, it seems we're heading for a thrilling summer here, with lawlessness becoming legal and Nazism officially backed up by the Swiss courts. Well, they've never done anything else, really, with Swiss courts defending Swiss superiority, silent laws and attacking immigrants with that Swiss Nazi judiciary. But now it has become official and in the open. Well... Let it be quick and painless. Russia and Iran are having huge problems with the US and the EU. And now, all of a sudden, Switzerland seems to be joining the club against the big US Satan. April 2014, the top brass of Swiss Nazis in Tehran. And a few weeks later, one of Switzerland's seven presidents in Moscow shaking hands with Putin. I wonder what solutions the Swissies offered against the big US Satan and the EU. Burghalter is one of the Swiss seven heads of state of the beast with seven heads, a Bundesrat, and now celebrated as a hero by their mainstream media, as one of the seven horsemen of the apocalypse of the seven wings of power. Therefore, the beast with the seven heads of the Alps chose to send a man who sees the world through numbers, exchange rates, banking assets, stock exchange rates and financial interests. Yes, an economist, economist as a foreign minister to defend Switzerland's first and biggest value, money and their financial grip on the world. Indeed, a very powerful issue for a foreign minister reminding Putin of the fact that another additional 6.6 .6 billion of Russian money landed in the Swiss Alps due to the Ukraine crisis 
together with the rest of the trillions of rubles in the Swiss vaults by the Russian oligarchs as Mr. Khodorkovsky and his pals. And if Russia wanted to ever see that money again, it better listen to the Swiss deal and back the fuck out from the Ukrainian border with that 40,000 head troopers and free that Swiss Red Cross hostage of that notorious Geneva spy organization of the Templars. Quite some arguments together with the fact that when the motherland of the Templars orders, the whole World Wide Web of Masons have to obey and execute the orders. And this is why Swiss Burkhalter went to Moscow himself in person on May 7th, 2014 to make sure their man put in Mr. Freemason as the rest got the orders all right. Internal problems rising as Putin's initial disobedience because they see the US going versus the Brotherhood's orders concerning the Swiss banks. Why? because the Swiss bank sucked out the US government through tax evasion, thus attacking the US Mason authorities, leading to internal strife within Pharaoh's Brotherhood. Whereas, if the Swiss banks would steal from the American citizens, as the BIS, the Bank of International Settlements, did during Black Tuesday in 1929, then it wouldn't be any problem, and the US government would never interfere. But as they are robbing the Brotherhood across the Atlantic, this causes friction with the motherland in the Alps. Right, you can see the octagon, um, the octagons all over. Right. Well. There he is again, Mr. Burkhalter. Swiss Buchhalter, the economist of the centre-right radical party, doesn't really care about peace, as we all know. That that country and the Alps and their banks rather finance wars and dictators. Anyway, economi economists are calculators and not hard-led beings. And what we witnessed was a direct order to Mr. Putin which he followed against the will of the uh, Russian minorities in the Ukraine, whom he betrayed. Because Burghalter and the Brotherhood of the Templars made it clear that if not, Octagon would deal with it, just as they did with Kennedy, Lady Di, Allende, Mossadegh, Reverend King, Malcolm X and the rest. On the other hand, wars between countries are only against the people, humanity as a farmed race, and for the Horus Matrix. And the anagram, by the way, of which Burkhalter happens to be the president, has several anagrams like code or deco for decoration, sounding like decoy. And in Switzerland, they celebrate him as the new Swiss turbo book halter. Or well, can you believe it? This is what we should believe, don't we now? But it's all inside, inside, inside job, you know. And here, uh, Mr. Burkhardt halter. Well, that's today, uh, May tenth. He's freeing the Red Cross, this meaning Red Cross, Rot, like in Rothschild, it means red, and Kreuz, it means the cross. So the Swiss hero, he freed the uh, his own Red Cross, and there was one Swiss of this 
a notorious spy organization. Right, this is octagon ordering, Mr. Putin. It is. Otherwise, they, you would have ended up, they would have JFK'd him. This is what's happening. Wars are only for us, the people, so we die. It is not for them. They have their own means, you know, to settle disputes among each other. As we saw with JFK. And the fires are still not opened. Because we are just a cattle. Well, here the Red Cross, the spy. So here's a proof that Putin even betrays his own people, you know. These. Well, that's you know, his own sort of Russian minority. He doesn't give a damn about any Russian minorities, I tell you. This was an internal settlement. He got the orders as being a Freemason of the World Wide Web of Freemason from the motherland, Switzerland, of the Templars. This is how it works. And this is what happened. Why else do you think this very powerful country just listen to this, this small country in the Alps where all the money is? So Putin, he got the order from this guy here from the motherland of the Templars and he's just a Freemason of the the World Wide Web, and he, he had to obey, otherwise they would have JFK'd him. You remember this one? Uh, he was sitting with Janukovic at this place here, in the Kremlin. There was a Sun hieroglyph. Well, after my film, which you can still see in the, uh, the Janukovic secret symbols, and the pharaoh oligarchy on Gure, well, they took it off. It's not there anymore. They saw my film. Isn't that funny, eh? It's gone. It's not there anymore. Hmm. So, uh, well, they pulled the troops out. He got the uh, he got an order, and he obeyed. Simple as that. Well, it says he's a uh, this guy here. He's a center right radical. I don't know what that means. Right wing, radical right wing, or well, all right wingers in this country. This one here was supposed to be a socialist, and she was in favor of the Swiss banking secret. Can you imagine stealing from the people and being in favor of it? They call it caviar socialists. That's what she is. I met her once in Bern. So that was on May 7th. You can see the Swiss flag a couple of times together with the Russian flag. Burkhalter, Putin. Well, this is just for the show, for us. No, no more Sun Euroglyph. Bye bye. That's obey, eh? Sucks, doesn't it? Yeah. And here the website of the uh, Russian, the Kreml, the Kremlin, Gremlins, wasn't that a horror movie, the Gremlins? <laughs> yes, Mr. Holder, the Swiss banks are too big to jail or too big to fail. They're standing above the law. And here's a charming picture of the actual Swiss finance minister. Too big to fail and too big to jail. Charming, isn't it? And there she is again. And last but not least, as I showed you before, just a few weeks before the Swiss hero, the Swiss new new Swiss Turbo Burkhalter, uh, went and see Mr. Putin, the top brass of the Swiss Nazi Party. They went uh, to Iran over Easter in 2014. Just, just a few weeks, or maybe only a week before, uh, two weeks before uh, Burkhalter met. Uh, Mr. Putin. 
Well, Switzerland seems to have joined that club here, don't they now? This is the seed of evil from Switzerland in the Alps, who calls himself the Viking, or El Vikingo in Spanish. You don't have to look twice to understand what I mean. Just look at this expressionless face, which we also saw with the, uh, those BLM terrorists at the Bundy Ranch in Nevada those authorities and the SS, the SS guards of the concentration camps. This is so typical Swiss, those empty, expressionless faces, as if no real human soul was in there. You see, they're all over in Switzerland and their fifth column of octagon sleeper agents. Especially in 2005, the crimes of the Swiss beast or El, El Assassino Suizo accumulated in him performing several assassinations himself, backed up by the motherland in the Alps and the Octagon organization, just as the Hoovers, Custers and Eisenhowers, as I explained in my previous films. His direct boss, the interior minister Carlos Filman, fled to Spain as there was a people's uprising against the Swiss octagon fifth column serial killers of the local police authorities. And Spirison flew to the motherland Switzerland, where he got total protection until 2012, when the international pressure got too high. And now he's standing trial in Geneva in a Swiss show trial farce lasting for the next three weeks. And where the Swissies will whitewash their sleeper agent, as if it were some tax evasion or drugs money process going, doing the famous Snow White Swiss money laundering thing. Yes, of course he'll go free in the end, just as his serial killer pal who fled to Spain as in the famous Nazi red line, but now in the reverse gear. Fielmann is also a German name, just as there are a couple of thousand Spirisen in Switzerland, the motherland. Our man here is from Zoloton region, from Octogon, Switzerland. These are the descendants of Nazi war criminals who made it on Swiss Red Cross passports to South America through the Nazi Red Line after the Second World War and through Operation Paperclip set up by the Swiss man in the field called Eisenhower, who also initiated the Cold War against the Communists and Russia on the orders of Octogon, the motherland. So this is Sperison, the Swiss guy, you see the gun here? And this is Fielmann. Uh, it has often been questioned what happened to the descendants of those who went on the Nazi red line to South America. Well, here they are. And we can witness the very same thing going on today, setting up Russia against the EU and US, where neither Europeans, Russians or Americans want this. But the Swiss Nazi Templar banks ordered this solution as there's too much international pressure on them. I'm quite sure this is the octagon symbol behind of octagon. Okay. The family of this Swiss assassin police chief of Guatemala is a billionaire oligarch by the name of Eduardo Ernesto Spirisen. And so is his entire family. And don't have yourself fooled by the Spanish first names as these are still recent sleeper agents not yet encrusted in society for hundreds of years as those Nazis in Germany of Swiss origin who murdered one million non-Jewish Germans in the concentration camps and 13 million civilians all over Europe. Well, that's what I thought. This is Octogon from Switzerland. When I saw the uh the, uh, the, the symbol on the uh, Policia Nacional uh, behind Mr. Sperison just before. Wow. What do you know, eh? 
Well, there it is again, Octogon. Well, this has been in the hand for the of the Swissies and the, the Nazi Templars for much longer. Uh, maybe somebody can find out when they um, made this logo. That's an imp important date. Probably just after 1945, when they all came with the on the red line. Hey. So considering what the ancestors of the uh, the second and third generation now in South America of Octagon and the Nazis, uh, what tactics the uh, the ancestors did during the war and in Germany and against the German people, they were like this. The first wave consisted of the German Wehrmacht, the army, and Luftwaffe, the air force, tanks, cannons, infantry, and airplanes. And then came the second wave of Swiss origin Einsatzgruppen, as Swiss Karl Jäger of the Jäger Report, savagely butchering men, women and children. Well anyway, Spirison has a Swiss passport, Swiss nationality he always had, and they protect him in the motherland. You know, most Germans had no idea what was really going on in the concentration camps because nobody came back from there and the Nazis would kill him immediately if they would investigate or come closer to the camp. The Germans themselves were prisoner in the, prisoners in this Nazi dictatorship set up by the treacherous Swiss Octogon fifth column inside Germany of Swiss descent sleeper agents just as we can see now through these actual events in Guatemala where an estimated 100,000 Nazis went to South America after the war and Octagon always goes immediately after the key positions police chief, interior minister, etc. Now let's analyze this sick similarity here you can see the smiling Nazis, Nazi guards of a concentration camp after they killed 10,000 people a day and children processed as in a machine they got upset about some strawberries they couldn't get and this is so typically Swiss they actually get very much upset about whether writing the name of the city Sankt Gallen with or without a space behind the hyphen while widely spreading racism, hatred and terror on immigrants, so typically Swiss. They're getting upset about nothing, just like the concentration camp uh, smiling girls and guards there uh, getting upset about not having their strawberries. This is Swiss, this is not German, this is Octogon. And look in the St. Gallen uh, logo. Well, this is the Fasches, as in fascism which we can see the Nazi use it, it's in the, uh, in the American uh, Senate, it's everywhere. Getting upset about nothing. You know, they've got nothing to worry about, you know. they have absolutely nothing to worry about and they don't give a damn about human rights, you know. Terrorizing innocent people like me and my family and getting upset about a space or not after the hyphen in a, in a, in a city name. This is like the guys and the girls you just saw smiling, you know, so innocent and neutral, you know. This is Switzerland. This is Swissies. Yeah, and just look how all, all, the, all these letters they're sending me, you know. Look at it. I don't even open them up anymore. Look, they're still closed. I don't open them up. You know, it ruins my day. Yeah, this is uh, Justice Department, Justice Department. Finance department, they even want money, you know, it's a crime to have no money in Switzerland. Only these two, my wife opened them up, only these ones. Some lawyer who doesn't, a Swiss lawyer who doesn't do anything. Finance department, um, I have to collect the letters. Well, I mean, it just ruins my day and there's nothing I can do anyway. They don't keep their own laws, they don't keep any international laws. So why should I recognize this Swiss Nazi Justice Department anyway, who's protecting criminals from 
Swiss Octagon Police Chiefs of Guatemala, serial killers, rapists, Swiss banks, child molesters, they all protect them. And me, because I open up my mouth, you know, I'm getting terrorized without end, you know. This is plain terror. Plain, plain terror. You know, while well, I don't recognize this country anymore, because they don't keep their international agreements, which they signed, I don't recognize them anymore, you know. Bunch of criminals they are. Plain criminals. I don't, you see, I don't open it up anymore. I don't. What's the use? I don't. You see, Swissies? I just pile them up. This is only a few months. Why should I open it up? You know, it's going on for 17 years. 17 long years. Maybe 18 now. And they don't stop. It goes on and it goes on. It doesn't change. I mean, I, I can't take this series anymore, can I? Come on. Now look at all the unopened letters I'm collecting. They're miserable Swiss lies and plain terror on innocent people. And simultaneously, Swissies protect their fifth column serial killers as El Bikingo Erwin Sperisen. It's all upside down, where Octagon, the seed of evil, is rooted. The Nazi red line created small but growing rats' nests all over South America called Pequeña Suiza or Colonia Suiza, slowly but certainly installing their Octagon's laws and imposing Swiss superiority religion upon the locals as it has surfaced from the abyss today in this Swiss-made horror in Guatemala, which the Swissies will try and whitewash during the next three weeks showtime. So keep your eyes on it real carefully because this is a unique event concerning Octagon's involvement sticking out its nasty head. Look, they even have a Pequeña, a little Switzerland, Pequeña Suiza in Luxembourg. It's a small country in uh, uh, in Europe. I think it's even on the Rhine and the Rhine goes to Switzerland. Look, it even has Swiss flags, Swiss houses and snowy mountain tops. And it is in Spanish. Because they're used to it. They're used to this thing there in, in South America. And they say, hey, look, there's even a Pequeña Suiza in Luxembourg. We're not the only ones who have them. This thing is big and has all of Octagon's ingredients through their typical characteristics, all combining as big Swiss money involved. Spiris and father is Guatemala's ambassador representative of the Geneva-based World Trade Organization, which you can see here. All these fake so-called For Humanity Geneva NGOs, Swiss oligarchs, fifth column, Nazi, red line, etc. This, this thing is huge, goes deep and has almost no media coverage. Here you can see the, uh, a part of the, uh, the, uh, the WTO World Trade Organization Geneva. Well, the building is huge. I know it personally, and at the entrance and all around, it's full of pharaonic symbols. There's a sun hieroglyph. It's on the, um, I, th I think this is the entrance here. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah, look, Cook, cooking, cooking up crisis, a W2A-T-O. And this is all, this is all involved, you know, in this, in this Swiss serial killer, you know, ki murdering people in Guatemala. Uh, his father is the ambassador of this thing here. You see, th this is big. This is real big going on here. Oh, this is the real Switzerland. And it's sticking out its ugly head. So far, the Swissies have been stalling time, as usual, and deliberately have had years gone by since the actual crimes and, and prognostics are bad since two others from that Swiss fifth column murder gang in Guatemala have been acquitted not guilty in court in Austria and Spain. Two countries like Switzerland itself with a huge Nazi past. 
At the time of the Swiss Esquadrones de la Muerte in Guatemala, Oscar Berger, an another Swiss German name referring to the Alps, as Berg means mountain, was Guatemala's president from 2004 to 2008. Berger went to a Jesuit school. Berger, Sperison, Vilman, not very Hispanic sounding names, eh? It says Berger's ancestry is from Belgium. But there are no bags or mountains in Belgium. But there are, if you follow the Rhine, that comes out of the Swiss Alps and flows into Belgium, being the highway of the Middle Ages. And his ancestors are Mennonites who fled Switzerland where their Anabaptist community were heavily persecuted. The name Berger is also a part of the name Bilderberger or Bilderberger. And there are no mountains either in the place this comes from. So here you can see the uh, the president who was the president when the uh, the Esquadrones de la Muerte took place and all the the assassinations, and he looks very very Swiss. I know Swiss who look like this, and this is El Bikingo, the Swiss serial killer of the Nazi rat line. Well, both of them, I suppose, eh? Swissies are real opportunists and wait their time. First they form a fifth column, make big money like Spirison's family with the coffee business, then want more power, taking over key positions as son Spirison being nominated chief of police of the entire country by the Swiss oligarchy, fifth column and finally install fear and terror to defend Papa's big business. Same thing happened in the US with Eisenhower, the Hoovers and the Custers. And this trial NGO in Geneva is a farce, who in the end defend all that's Swiss. And I know them personally and went there several times. This trial NGO, like the Red Cross and the UN, is just part of the New World Order game. They give people hope, false promises, sweet talk, stall time, and in the end always defend Octagon of the Alps. As these NGOs were installed by Octagon in the first place. The best way to control the opposition is to lead it ourselves. The truth is that Switzerland is a killer nation that export wars, tyranny and the new world order. And when young unarmed people from poor countries like Moldavia come and get back what's theirs in the first place, then the Swiss police kills them. As the general order has been given out under impunity by Swiss laws. This young Molda Moldavian, the poorest country of Europe, stopped when summoned. Hands in the air, unarmed posing no threat to the Swiss cop, strapped to his safety belts in the car, and the Swiss cop opened the door and just shot him in the face. Then Swissy stole time, a couple of years, to have grass grown over it, and as always the Swiss premeditated murder cop got acquitted, not guilty, in a court during some Swiss show trial. Now you read the whole... Even the state's attorney, they, they just pretend as if, as if the state's attorney lost the case. Well, this is what they agreed upon in the first place anyway, you know. Just as El Esquadron de la Muerte, Erwin Sperrison from Switzerland, will be acquitted, not guilty. Because Switzerland will always go free, just as their... Swiss sleeper agent Dwight D. Eisenhower let Switzerland go with the Nazi gold after World War II because Switzerland is so clean, neutral and innocent. They never did anything wrong. So you can read some more of the related articles, just punch pause, I'll put it all in the links below the film. There's not much in the media about it, eh? Or 
let's say nothing at all. Well, I put the other articles, I put them in the link so it's easier to read them, I think. It says he has dual Swiss Guatemalan citizenship. The head of Guatemala's former police. So, this is the last one, and the rest you can read in the, uh, in the links. Well, this is funny. Swiss step up hunt for war criminals. Ha! <laughs> what a joke. They gave the Red Cross cross passport to all the the Nazi war criminals. This guy is from Switzerland, etc., etc. So nobody will think it's them. You understand? You know, the best way to control the opposition is to control it ourselves. And that's what they do. The Red Cross is nothing else than a, a spy organization. And all the other NGOs is trial. That's T R I A L. Oh, I know them personally. They're a bunch of Swiss crooks. It's June 2014, and the Soccer World Cup is being played in Brazil. Switzerland made it too through the selection games, only because 95% of its players are Albanians, Yugoslavs, Turks, South Americans, Africans and other immigrants, as the Swiss themselves can't play any football. Because the Swiss national sports are conspiracy, money-making, corruption, Nazi banking, big theft, racism and plain hatred. And it's therefore that the International Soccer Federation, or FIFA, was founded in, yes, Switzerland again, as always, where all the world's NGOs are, are concerning all mankind's concerns and interests, so Octogon can steer and control it all. So this is in Wikipedia. So here we can read it. They were founded in 1904. The headquarters is in Zurich, Switzerland. And uh, the president is Sepp Blatter, Swiss. It's all Swiss. And the logo is to the two circles of the Vesica Peiches and the sun here. All Freemason stuff. And it's always Swiss. Always. Ever. All the NGOs, it's all Swiss. This is where the, um, the shadow government is. This is where they rule the world. Well, Octogon killed him before they, uh, he could expose this plot. And the same thing happened with this guy here as well. He didn't make it. He was killed by Octogon. And he even admits it that he wasn't a pay list of Octogon and Swiss America trading. So he had problems with his conscience. Um, you know, first they come and like offer money when they see that uh, somebody has a big voice, uh, an influential voice. And. Um, so, and then they offered him money, paying his show, what he says as well. And um, then they sque squeeze him into more and more uh, things to do, and which he finally stopped, so they killed him. <laughs> The Hour of the Time, ladies and gentlemen, is brought to you by Swiss America Trading. They specialize in non-confiscatable, non-reportable hard assets, real money as described in the Constitution for the United States of America and in the law. So believe me, the Swiss have their dirty little fingers in everything. Even Bill Cooper, even Alex Jones with his logo and always saying Switzerland is so good and everything. Um, in spite of the fact that they robbed the U.S. blind, the Swiss did, and they um, they pleaded guilty of conspiracy. Well, they did 9-11, there's no doubt about it. 
Only Octagon can do this. And even Bill Cooper was on their pay list. You get it? Call Swiss America Trading, 1-800-289-2646. That's 1-800-BUY-COIN. Well, he says it himself. They paid his show. This is what the Mafia does. You know, first they come and give you something, and then they want a whole lot back. Didn't they, Bill? Well, there they are. They even have a YouTube channel, Swiss America Trading. And they have a website. So these are the guys. That's the website uh, with whom Bill Cooper went to bed with. And before he knew what was happening, they were asking um, many favors of him and forced him to do things. First they give you money and, and help you, and then they ask more and more and more. And if you won't do it, as Bill Cooper certainly didn't do that, well, then you're dead. And there shouldn't be any more doubt that the shadow government or world government is an octagon of the Alps. Everything is in or was founded in and comes from Switzerland with all the Geneva NGOs like the World Trade Organization, the ICRC, Red Cross, the Olympic Committee, the IOC, the United Nations, the Templars Banks, the Eurovision Frankenstein Conchita thing, World War II, the Nazi Red Line, Swiss mercenaries, the burning of witches and the Malleus Maleficarum written by the Swiss, Octagon Police, the, uh, the Ku Klux Klan, the Pope's Guard, some US presidents, etc, 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 and much more. So, the FIFA the the the, um, the, Fed the international federation of the of the football association was founded in switzerland in 1904 and is based in zurich where the main central head office the, their headquarters is and where i shot this footage in 2013. fifa this is the world soccer organization in zurich Hey, what are they so afraid of? Look at that. Everything is closed. I thought I thought soccer was for fun. Oh no, it's big business. No, it's politics. It is. The president of that octagon FIFA is of course Yes, the Swiss. And he has been so for the last 20 years with enormous corruption, fraud and financial crime around our game in the hands of Octogon and the Swiss. The Swiss financial crime around the FIFA and our game in the hands of the Swiss are so bad that last week the English law treatment compared the FIFA with the Mafia and Sepp Blatter, it's Don Carleone. A statement backed up by David Gill, Greg Dyke, and other high-ranking officials. Well, you can read the whole, the whole article. I'll put in the links for you. Oh, just sponge pause, eh? So, Swissy Zeb Blatter immediately called everyone a racist who dared to criticise him. Him, Blatter. A neutral, innocent and clean Swiss from Octagon and a country that financed Hitler and the Nazis and where racism fills the Swiss hearts. In Switzerland, the most racist country in the world and against which Mr. Swiss FIFA president would never say a single word. Therefore, it's no wonder that this country where they can't play soccer has given our game to another country where they don't play soccer either. And where it's even too hot to think about soccer, let alone playing it. Yes, Qatar in 2022. And Octagon even prepared the octagonal Octagon logo for them. 
with a pentagram in the middle. And Qatar lies in the Arabian Desert, where North and European sportsmen are supposed to participate and compete a world tournament in a place so hot that it feels like having your girlfriend's hair dryer right in your face the whole day. Not that those fancy millionaire soccer players and their fancy thousand dollar playboy hairstyles are not acquainted with their girlfriend's hair dryers, but nevertheless. So why the hell play soccer in the Arabian desert like Lawrence of Arabia, where the local pharaohs only know if football is round because they saw it on TV while chewing cat, as in the very name of cat ah, Qatar? Well, I tell you why. Because since 2008, when the IRS and the US Justice Department started to build up pressure on the Swiss Nazi banks, a financial shift from Switzerland to Qatar and the rest of the Arab Emirates started to take place, where Qatar paved the way for Swiss banksters to install and perpetuate their financial crime on several conditions. You do that for, you do that for me and I will do this for you concerning the World Champ Soccer Championship, eh? So, you can read the whole story here, just punch pause. Ah, oh, there they are again. Bill Cooper, Swiss America trading. Well, Bill Cooper, he had no idea whatsoever with whom he was uh, uh, having contact with and and what kind of a danger he was getting into look there they are again Swiss America well they're all over you know well they did Mr. Bill Cooper because he refused to do what they asked him to do yeah, you see this is from Finance Asia this is what I'm telling you 2008 then the whole thing started and they saw it coming then it started with the IRS and the US Justice Department and um, later on the Snowden affair, it was all about the Swiss banks. So what they do, they just shifted to Qatar. But Qatar, you know, the Qataris, they want something back as well. So you do that for me and I'll do this for you. But we want the World Soccer Championship having in our hair dryer um, Arabian desert. Now this is what's going on. And there's no mainstream media whatsoever who are telling you anything about this. Yeah? So I hear some more about it. In 2008, when it all started, that was the, uh, that was the big banking collapse, wasn't it? Wasn't that 2008? <laughs> I think it was, eh? So this is one of the Swiss, seven Swiss presidents. And I talked to her once. And it was just... A few minutes, or maybe 20 minutes, after a Swiss guy, he jumped off a bridge in Switzerland. Well, I, I never heard a noise like that before. It, it, it sounded like two cars smashing upon each other, like a collision. Metallic. So, this is what's going on, eh? Now, this is 2009. So here's some more. The Swiss bank rushes to Qatar. So the Swiss banks, they're getting a, a license for Qatar at the very same time. This, the, um, it's been announced and agreed upon, you know, by Octogon, that our soccer game are going to place, going to be done like in the, in the Arabian desert, like, you know. It has nothing to do with soccer. It's all financial crime and corruption and Switzerland. It's just about big business, big filthy business and a bunch of lies. And it's thus how the Swiss FIFA and Mr. Blatter gave our game to the land of the hairdryers, which they themselves call an emirate because of the emirs. 
ruling in them, which is a sort of a pharaoh with shopping malls showing huge pyramids and obelisks upon ent entry. So this is the Wafi City shopping mall in Dubai. Leaving no doubt that the ISIS jihadist group financed by Qatar, amongst others, gets financed through the trillion dollar business of our soccer madness addiction in the hands of Swiss FIFA, Octagon's 33rd degree mason, Sepp Blatter from Octagon and the Swiss Nazi bank shifting their weight to Qatar on certain conditions. So behind the Qatar financing, I tell you, the Swiss Nazi banks are behind it all. And this is Templar stuff. Already in the Crusades, the Templars and the, uh, the Hashashin, where the word assassin is coming from, they were working already together in those days. So you think they ever stopped doing so? Oh yeah, and here's the real ISIS, by the way. Just as the SES dressing up as, as, as Arabs and killing people. And there are 13 stars. Now... Uh, just as Osiris was cut into 13 pieces because this is part of the Horus Matrix and Isis, her husband, was cut into 13 pieces and the 13th part was his phallus. Intelligence, technology, training. Well, you see, this is the real Isis. So, if anyone from the NSA wants to know more, I can present you all the intel knowing the, knowing the criminal Swiss mind very well. After 17 years of Swiss lies and organized Swiss terror. Oh, well, and leave your hair dryers in your holsters when you NSA boys come round visit me. So, I tell you, behind the Qatar financing of... Uh, of the Jihad and Sharia, the Swiss Nazi banks are behind it. Oh, you bet. And as in Switzerland, only money is important, the Swiss FIFA and their Swiss World Soccer President, Zepp Blatter, have absolutely no problem with it that the Emir Pharaohs of Qatar use slaves to build the stadiums for the 2022 World Cup soccer hairdryer games. Qatar and the Swiss attract workers from Asian countries and then, upon arrival, confiscate the passports, don't send the promised wages to the overseas families, have built large guarded fences around the construction sites, provide provide bad food and poor hygienic facilities with workers sleeping on dirty mattresses in a corner of the, of the construction site. All in all, leading to the deaths of at least 900 workers so far and an estimated 4,000 work slaves will have, will have died for the Swiss World Soccer Games of 2022 of their Qatar business partners. Yeah, that was in the Guardian. It's all over. It's I mean, it's no it's no secret anymore. Same thing over again as the Swiss. They are giving the orders to Qatar. They gave the same orders to the Nazis and the concentration camps and the workers. Same thing happening again, and it's the Swiss behind it again. The financing of it. Yeah, you can read, read that. 4,000 migrant, migrant workers will be dead. Swiss Nazis, are, again, the Templar Nazis behind it. Just as they were behind the concentration camps and making big money out of it, you know. And taking it into their Swiss banks. Similarly, the Swiss and their FIFA ordered the cleansings of Rio de Janeiro poor people in the so-called favelas for the 2014 Soccer World Cup going on now. So here you can see the Swiss, Zeb Blatter, 
Don Corleone with his uh, his mafia here, the Swiss mafia, and uh, making a big buck out of Brazil, and making poor people suffer both in Qatar, Brazil, and all over. As soon as Brazil won the World Cup host in 2006, the cleansing started with black-dressed SWAT terrorists sweeping the favelas and trained by Eric Prince's Blackwater, who we know now is not of Dutch descent but the extension of the lineage of centuries of Swiss mercs all over our beautiful planet, and Blackwater's name comes from the Swiss Schwarzwasser region of the Bear, as I've all, as I've all shown in my other f my other videos. So you can see some pictures. I put in the links. See the Blackwater guys there. They're just shooting people for the FIFA. So the Swiss they can make a lot of money. The Swiss Nazis, yeah. Octagon. Same as in Qatar. Well, I put the link in your underneath the video. It's disgusting, really. Well, they're having these uh, death squads as well. Must be a clean soccer festival, eh? FIFA go home. FIFA, like mafia. They bulldozed people, people's homes and came with es, Escadrones de la Muerte, or death squads, just as Swiss Sperison recently did in Guatemala. So here you can see Mr. Seb Blatter in his bulldozer and destroying the houses in the favelas of the, of the poor people for his, uh, for his Swiss uh, mafifa. When the FIFA wants a clean a Switzerland environment to attract more spectators, thus more money, then they'll get it. At the same time evicting poor people out of the favelas where they pay no rent for their shacks and thus are not dependent like in the Monsanto nature patenting uh, program. And this is the, uh, the, um, the logo of the FIFA, which is of course the Freemason Vesica Peiches forming the oval here in the middle, like the two circles, just like the Olympic Committee and Gucci, Mastercard and the rest. It's, it's another Freemason Mafifa operation. You can read it, you know, they are, this is, these are cleansings. They, the, the Swiss have people murdered for their, for their, their, their money game here. This is in Qatar. This is Octagon. And they did Bill Cooper as well, I tell you. And here's some more. There you see. A little boy crying, Brazil soccer and he's saying things in, Braz in, in Portuguese. People probably don't have internet, you know, they just make drawings on the wall. They paint it on the walls, that's all they can do. So here's some information about the favelas and the, uh, the world soccer games. The favelas are from 
1897 and older than the 1904 founded Swiss FIFA and therefore have more rights to exist than that Swiss all-powerful FIFA. They were built by Brazilian army war veterans and black slaves who called it favela after a jungle tree that makes you itch very badly, thus describing the terrible living conditions of poor people on the marge of society who just wanted to be free, live and breathe the life of freedom. Until the Swiss came round with their FIFA black water and suitcases full of money, a bait to pull out even more suitcases full of money. Yes, Swiss always crushed freedom with money. Nothing new really. Oh yeah, and with the mercenaries they crushed freedom, eh? So you can, you can read some of the history. 1897, that's older than the FIFA. The favelas were first created in 1897 in Rio de Janeiro by Brazilian veterans of the Canudos War, a Brazilian civil war. I'll put in the link for you. So here's some more in Wikipedia. Uh, they were built by soldiers and black slaves. And here it says uh, the a favela is a skin irritating tree. Well, etc. So, put in the links for you. Now, let's have a closer look at Zeb Blatter or Mr. Don Corleone of the FIFA Mafia and other arm of the con conglomerate of the Swiss Mafia or of, of the Nazi Templars of Octagon, the world's biggest Mafia and the world's shadow government. His name Zepp is a Swiss Alemannic name also found in southern Germany because of the Swiss mercenaries and their compatriots settling down all over southern Germany after the Thirty Year War ending 1648 meaning Zepp for Joseph. Just as the notorious Zepp Dietrich of southern Germany as well and descendant of the Swiss mercenary lineage who studied at a hotel school in Zurich, Switzerland, just as Rudolf Hess studied in Zurich where Hitler got invited and financed by the Swiss and the general Ulrich Wille, all in all leading to the fact why they all got along so well later on, when Zepp Dietrich became the second highest general and Obergruppenführer in the SS and commander of the notorious killer brigade within the SS called the Leibstandarte SS Adolf Hitler. All because of the good old days in Zurich, Switzerland back then making lots of use useful contacts. So here we can read the whole article. Well, he was Hitler's driver, you know, his chauffeur. He was there from the beginning. He was in the Night of the Long Knives. He was there killing the real German nationalists. And then so it was, it was all taken over by Octagon. So as everything gets infiltrated and taken over. So I'll put in the links for you. And of course he could live on comfortably until 1966. No problem. And this is the German Zepp Dietrich, the German Wikipedia, which is slightly different and has some more information. Like for instance that it says Dietrich, he was in, the, in Schweiz, which is the German name for Switzerland. While he was in Zurich, he was in a hotel school. So, he probably spent a couple of years there, just as Rudolf Hess and Mr. Hitler. So, well, that's an interesting fact. It always leads back to Switzerland, the motherland. So, concerning the name Zepp, like in Zepp Blatter. 
The Godfather. Well, there's another Godfather, another killer. Zepp has been working for the FIFA for 40 years, since 1975, and has been its president since the last century and for almost 20 years now. Apparently, he's a 33rd degree Mason and a big Swiss sick pervert concerning his sexual aberrations and pervert fantasies that women must be forced to wear suspender belts and are not allowed to wear party pantyhoses anymore. And as in the land of Baphomet, Baphomet and the Sodomite Templars, these sort of things are completely normal. He became the president in 1970 of a Swiss organization in the motherland which openly tried to prescribe women what sort of garments uh, women should wear under their skirts, just as a Qatari Muslim is equally preoccupied with the ladies' guard rope covering their ladies under a ton of black clothing. So here you can see, you know, this is in Wikipedia. So Blatter was elected president of the World Society of Friends of Suspenders, an organization which tried to stop women replacing suspender belts with pantyhose. What a sick pervert. So he's these kind of guys are like tearing down the favelas and, and having slaves in, in, in Qatar while they're having these, these sick sexual fantasies, you know. And this is so typical Swiss. Where pedophiles and all this are being protected. So this is in Wikipedia, I'll put it in the links for you, you can all read it yourself. It's sick, it's corrupt. Well, it says there's a lot of corruption allegations in his... Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's no... There's no smoke without fire, eh? What was that? Controversies, allegations of corruption. Well, of course they're true. I don't want to speculate about what other sexual aberrations Swissy Zepp has in a country where the Swissy Parliament voted in favour of incest being okay and totally legal in Octogon of the Alps a few years back. Like, come on little boy, let's play some soccer together. Probably explaining why he had to get married three times. Probably engaging in domestic terror over what stockings to wear or not. So you can see this is in 2010, you know. Uh, about incest in Switzerland making it legal. Well, that, that's what the pharaohs did, didn't they? And the aristocracy. You know, like, okay, Swissy. Fuck your mother and your son will be your brother like, you know? Well, this is sick. Excuse my language, eh? I'll put in the links for you. So, this could be seen on... Uh, the US Daily Mail online. There you go. And in the year 2000, me, Sean Ross, I beat the shit out of one of those Swiss perverts, pedophile, pedophiles called Ernst Stoller from Bern. Well, and guess who went to prison for that? Yes, me, and not the child molester. There's no other country in the world where these perverts are so highly structured, protected, and live in total impunity, as in octagon. Of the Alps. Zeb Blatter finished university in 1959 where he studied business economics. Well, and you thought football was a game, eh? No, soccer is a business of the Roman bread and games ideology of the ruling class who even get filthy rich out of it. He practiced the Swiss laws of silence of the omerta of the mafia the swiss mafia of octagon 
and Zeb Blatter attended the very same University of Lausanne, Switzerland, where the Prince of Darkness and co-member of the SS had studied law some years before. And he too founded a world-famous NGO only two years after Zeb left that very same university. So on September the 11th, which is an important date for the pharaohs, it's called Enkutatach, 9-11-1961, also including the digit of 9-11, the World Wildlife Fund was founded in Morges, in Switzerland, right next to Lausanne. While the Prince Founder went out shooting tigers with Prince Philip, while we thought to be financing the preservation of the animals instead of financing aristocracies hunting parties. He is in fact the person after whom Ian Fleming got inspired to create his 007 James Bond, not really fiction novels, and the bond it is with Ja for Yachin and Bo for Boas, the two Masonic obelisks, as in Ja, Jason, Bo, Born, as in James, Ja, James, Bo, Bond and the bond confirmed by 007 where 7 is the number for the pyramid and consequently the square and compass as the number 3 stands for the side of the pyramid as the 60 degree compass or Isis, Horus and Seth the Holy Trinity of the Holy Spirit, the Father and the Son and with 4 the pyramid's base or square for the four elements together forming the seven as in 007. Just as the fair aristocratic prince of darkness liked and owned fast cars, airplanes, hunting both animals and women, skiing in Switzerland and attended charming upper-class cocktail parties. One thing though, he was not really fighting for the cause of justice. With that number 007 implying that he's agent number 7 of an entire three digit army of almost 1000 men when 999 is the highest number in the three digit cate category and when turned around giving that other famous three digit of 666 or June 6th at 6 o'clock of the Horus Matrix. All those tough agents risking their lives for that old shemail or Omaha bitch called M for Mother or Maria. And being no less than Isis of course of that M sign implying the full 999 digit being one shy of the number 1000 in working secret secretly for the next stage against humanity of the thousand year Reich through the 666 Horus Matrix. And that's why I, Sean Ross, always say my name is Bond. Vagabond. And you can read about the aristocratic hunting parties which we finance through this uh, Geneva or Lausanne NGO of the World Life uh, Fund. And here it is, the real James Bond here. He knew Ian Fleming and um, the German SS. Well, it's the aristocracy. I mean, the, these pharaohs are ruling anyway, you know. And to them it doesn't matter if it's SS or the MI6 or it's all the same. They're fighting us. And this is what he founded on 9-11-1961 in Morges, Switzerland, which is right near to Lausanne, where they all went to the university, Prince Bernhard of Lippe-Bisterfeld, Switzerland, the headquarters. It says the headquarters um, are in Switzerland. It always is Switzerland. It always is. It all turns around 
Switzerland. This is the base. Look, here's an article of the New York Times when he died at the age of 93. And uh, well, it says he was in the SS. And uh, he studied in Switzerland. He was even in the. Uh, he was even. Uh, he worked for IG Farben. Those were the the ones who. Uh, well, there it is. Yeah, IG Farben. He worked for IG Farben. Those were the ones who created, who made a Zyklon B, uh, Tiklon B, which is the word for a cyclon, a a, a wind, you know in uh, German with the, the, uh, the stuff with which all the Jews were poisoned in the shower. Go and have a shower, you know. It was all, uh, and it's all, it's all, it's, it's very Swiss, you know, the way it's all hidden and, and camouflaged and and omerta, the, the, the laws of silence. It's, it's, it's all around Switzerland. He studied in um, yeah, it says he studied in, in Lausanne, Switzerland, just as Zeb Blatter. And he founded his NGO, just like like the FIFA and all the NGOs. It's all Swiss. All Swiss. The aristocracy, the Templars and Swiss. And the logo of the Swiss FIFA are two balls or circles forming the mason Vesica Pites together making the oval the power of organization. You see here, this is the oval forming with those with the Vesica Pites, just as Gucci, Mastercard, and the rest. And uh, here it's forming a pentagram. So it's highly Masonic. Just as this other NGO of the IOC, the International Olympic Committee from Octagon, also forming the Vesica Pites by its five rings of power, also headquartered in Lausanne, Switzerland, and having 33 honorary members. Here, this is the Vesica Pites, just as the FIFA, you know, forming the oval here, and it's based, it has its headquarters in Lausanne, uh, it has 33 honorary members, and it's always Swiss, always. Here it says, headquarters in Lausanne, Switzerland. So, well, and here, and here, look, here's, here's the headquarters. It looked like a high security prison. Look at that. I tell you, Switzerland always has its dirty little fingers in it. And Octagon of the Alps is the very place where the world's shadow government of the Nazi Templars resides.